You know, this is a town that loves its tight ends. You know, Mike Ditka, Bruner. You know what? Vance McNanimal. They call him the Van Animal, you know, Mike. McDonald. Vance McDonald. You've got an interesting theory where he should be in, in this offense right now. Well, when the Steelers were really productive, you know, about you know eight years ago, they had uh, Heath Miller. And, uh, and then they, uh, they also had Jeremy Tooman way back when. They, Do you remember they, Eric Green? I mean, he was as big as a U.S. You Steel building. You, you, need to, you need to utilize the tight end. It helps the run game. It helps the quarterback. It helps. It'll help Juju Smith-Schuster. A tight end that can catch the football and get down the middle of the field opens it up for the outside. Yeah, you need another receiver to eventually step up. Don K. Moncrief is struggling right now catching the football, so they need another guy. Who is it going to be? He, he's like Joe Namath. Remember Namath on Monday Night Football? He goes, I'm struggling a yeah, That's Moncrief. Okay. He's struggling a But, it, that, you know, so the tight end can be a number one. Look at the team. You know, you look, you, Philadelphia Eagles, Zach Ertz is number one. Kansas City, uh, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey is the number one. The team we're playing this week, the 49ers, okay, their number one receiver is George Kittle, tight end. And George Kittle is going to cause havoc against the Pittsburgh Steelers unless they get someone that can cover them. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about Devin Bush. you got to like Devin Bush's aggressiveness. He likes to hit people, which is great as an inside linebacker. But there's one, shall I say, little problem. The Steelers have him listed at 5'11". Mike, I interviewed him. I'm a shade under 6 foot, getting old now. I don't think he's 5'10 in cleats. Yeah, um, he was... He looks shorter than 5'11". You know, last week he went up against Will Disley, 6'4". That's a five-inch difference at least. And Will Disley had two touchdowns prior to last week. He had two touchdowns, five targets, five receptions, 50 yards. He looked all pro. All you have to do is send him down the middle of the field and throw the ball up high. He had no safety help. You can't put Devin Bush on George Kittle this week. You have to either put a safety on him. And you can put George. Devin Bush is fast. He's quick. He can cover a running back but he cannot cover a tall tight end. Well, that's what I like about Barron so far. I really do. Another Alabama product. Speaking of Alabama, speaking about Roll Tide, I tell you what, this Mike Tomlin likes this Fitzpatrick kid. He basically told us in a press conference today, we wanted Fitzpatrick before we got uh, Terrell Edmonds. There's nothing not to like about this kid. He steps into the Alabama program a couple years ago, Mikey. Starts starts for Lee, uh, Saban down in Alabama as a freshman All-American. Just wreaks havoc in the SEC. Goes down to Miami, whatever. Maybe he doesn't like the beach. I hope he likes Three Rivers. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, picking him up, you know, the Steelers, they expressed how much they liked him. If they had a chance to get him back then, they would have. But he went too high. Okay, so now they have the opportunity. They capitalize on it. You know, he, he was four-year starter with Nick Saban, two years down in Miami. To me, being at Alabama, oh. that's, that's four years in the pros. That's four years as a minor leaguer, basically. So he's got six professional years playing experience. He's going to step in. He's going to help the defense immediately. He can cover. He can hit. He can do it all. Well, the fact is he runs a 4-4. He's 6'1", 205 pounds. He's a big fellow. But this leads to this argument that I'm going to make. I love Sean Davis. Basically, Sean Davis has knocked himself out with his shoulder injury because he likes to hit. He likes to hit. He's led the team in tackles the last couple of years, but he's playing the wrong position. They have him playing, Sean Davis, free safety. They have Edmonds play in strong safety. For you folks that don't know, your strong safety has to be a little bit more nuttier and like to hit people. He plays closer to the line of scrimmage. He maybe covers those tight ends. Mike, in two seasons, I don't think Terrell Edmonds likes to actually hit people. Well, I really don't. I'm not sure about that, but last week they had him covering uh, DK Metcalf one-on-one. -on -one. DK Metcalf, you know, he's not a number one receiver. You know, he's, he's a bigger guy. He's built like a tight end. And it goes to show you right there, I don't think Terrell Edmonds is going to be able to hang with uh, George Kittle as well. George Kittle is a 
massive weapon for the 49ers. Killed killed tons of teams last year. He is huge for them. You got to take uh, you got to take George Kittle away. How are you going to do that? I would put Fitzpatrick, uh, make, make a Fitzpatrick on him right away, yeah. and get and get your use out of him right away. You have to you have to be able to to take him out of the game plan and make them run the football against you. They had you know they got they don't even have a set running back. They have a running back by committee. Tevin Coleman's out, so they got Raheem Mostert. They have uh, Wilson and they have uh, Matt Breida. All three of those guys are capable, but you got to take George Kittle out of the game plan and then. You know, make them one to dim- make them one dimensional and try and run the football. Look, I really don't know what the key to your Pittsburgh Steelers defense is right now. Well, Bud Dupree, uh, you know, he's in his fifth year of his contract. I really thought Bud was going to step up a little bit this year. Right now, he's been out of position several times. But I'm going to go back to camp, Mike, because I mentioned to you when they let go of the Joey Porter, your Steelers as the outside linebackers coach, uh, Carl Dunbar the defensive line coach also took over responsibilities for your outside linebackers. To me, two distinct positions. A down lineman is not the same as an outside rush linebacker. The Steelers were remiss, in my opinion, Mike, not to get Bud Dupree, a quality outside linebacker coach that could teach him to rush. Last year, Bud Dupree was in the backfield constantly, putting pressure on the quarterback, overrunning the quarterback running by him but what a lot of people don't understand is you got to get by that left tackle before you're even in the backfield and he was doing that successfully i think the bottom line mike is i think the steelers were remiss not to get bud dupree a legitimate outside linebackers coach well i think carl dunbar you know being a d-line coach as an outside rush linebacker i think Maybe they think he could actually teach him the rush. And then as far as the pass having, uh, the dropping in the coverage part, they can go, you know, they got Terrell Austin helping out with the defense. Love backs. Terrell. You know, you got Terrell Austin, you got Mike Tomlin, you got all these defensive coaches. Mike Tomlin is a defensive coach. He does nothing with the offense. He's not an offensive coach. His background's defense. Started off in Cincinnati as a defense back. Uh, Don't forget Tom Bradley, Penn Stater. Tom Bradley's defense back. But Mike Tomlin started in Cincinnati. He went to, to Tampa Bay. He was a D coordinator with Minnesota, Tampa 2, zone defense. That's his, that's his strong point. That's what he brings, okay? So you've got the defensive coaches, okay? The defense needs to step up now, okay? Did if you see how many points the Patriots put up? You know, did you see what Russell Wilson did in the second half? Yeah, they better step up and the, soon. The situation with Ben right now. Ben's not playing linebacker. I, I know, but the situation <laughs> with Ben right now, it, it, it almost gives Coach Tomlin that extra excuse if, if they have a bad season, I lost my starting quarterback, okay? Mm. I lost my starting quarterback. Mm. And, but if Mason Rudolph does great, it's going to be, hey, look what I did with the backup quarterback, okay? Uh, so it's almost a win-win for Coach Tomlin. I think you're but, addressing all the boo sayers out there saying but, Tomlin's got to go. But, yes, yes, you're right. But you look at the defense, that's what Coach Tomlin's known for. He is a defensive guy. It's time for the defense to step up. Stephen A. Smith, the other day on first take, was calling out Coach Tomlin, saying this is your this is your background, this is your specialty. The defense needs to you know produce, and they haven't been. And he said the offense has been producing, but the defense has been lackluster. Well, now it's been horrible. And he's also pointed out the fact that since 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, seven straight years, their first round draft pick has been defensive picks, and now you got your you got 2019. That's seven straight years. Now you got 2020, your eighth straight year. You just use your first pick on Mika Fitzpatrick. To me, that was the best pick of all of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it was too. Unfortunately, Ryan Shazier, he got injured. That was, you know. But you've got eight first round draft picks on your that you had, you know, the defense gotta produce. And if they don't, if they don't write the ship this by the end of this year, it Wait. might be time for Coach Tomlin. Well, I tell you what, to close this segment out, one defensive uh, mind that is no longer here, which I think is one of the biggest mistakes the Steelers and Coach Tomlin have made over the last several years, they sent Dick LeBeau packing. 